Hello, my stitching friends. My name is Amanda May McNaughton, and I am the lead designer for Artith Design, where we celebrate count and cross stitch and sustainable stitching. I am so happy to be back to talk all about counted cross stitch with you today. I have a bunch of stuff to talk about, including some small finishes, yay, wins, the small wins. I also want to talk about some stitching acquisitions, one <laughs> really awesome one and two that are equally cool that are my save the stitches pieces. I have some works in progress to show you and I'm just excited to be here. So welcome. If you are new to my channel, I am all about sustainable stitching and count and cross stitch and I also have announced my advocacy for stuff. <laughs> and I know that that has caused a bit of controversy. And I understand that we live in a global world where there are different things and different stuff. But on my channel, I denounce white supremacy. I want us to stop the xenophobic rhetoric. Love is love and cross stitch is epic. So <laughs> with that, if that sounds good to you, then you're in the right place. And if not, I sending lots of love to you. And there are so many amazing cross stitch channels out there that you can find. But if you want to hang out with me some more, uh, awesome. <laughs> I, well, what should we start with? Okay. We'll start with finishes because I am really excited about some of my finishes. First off, I want to thank, and I'll have them linked below. I want to thank a, a floss tube video maker. Her name is Helen D. She came out with a cute little Easter pattern and I did a little, I, I, well, I followed her pattern mostly, but I didn't put everything on there. So it says Easter bunny colored eggs and jelly beans. And I just kind of picked some from some of my threads. This is literally the tiniest little piece of opal white linen, like a 32 count that I had in my stash. Someone had asked me about sustainable stitching and what exactly does that mean? Well, there are many different facets and one of them is keeping all your scraps, no matter how small, because you never know if you have an ornament or a spool finish or even a small button that you want to stitch for cross stitch and <laughs> these scraps do go a long way. So don't throw away, reuse. So that is one of my little tips. So I did not put in marshmallow peeps, not because I don't like marshmallow peeps, it's because my fabric was way too small and I couldn't fit it all in. So instead, I just have the peep, I'm gonna fold this over and I might put it on a candy jar. I've got some candy jars lining in my bar and my bar area is for my plants and my candy. Two of my other loves. <laughs> besides cross stitch, but I digress. So here is one of my finishes. The next finish that I have, I'm super excited about is Fond Hearts. And this is by Maggie Bonanami. She did a collaboration with Blackbird Designs. This chart has been reissued. I did my own thread kind of color conversion, but most of it is Victorian Motto Sampler Shop Threads. This is stitched on a piece of linen, 32 count, and this is seven, it's titled 1776, and it was a color and cotton dyed linen for the 2019 Patriotic Thread Mystery Thread Box that I participated in. So this is one of the pieces and I rolled over and sewed up my hems. So this piece, it's two, it's stitched with two threads over two linen strands, except for the, this font here, which is really fun. I mean, it, to me, it really looks like handwriting and that is stitched with one strand over one, so one over one stitching, which means one strand of the cotton floss over one 
linen thread. I did use a small hoop to stitch this, but the rest of this I did stitch in hand. And I'm so happy to have this completed. And just for fun, I'll show you my backside. And yeah, I did take some artistic liberties. The edges of the flowers here are supposed to be, or down here, like the, you know, the, the center flowers. I know all of you are, are yelling at your TV screens and telling me what it's called, but uh, it's supposed to be one over one stitched all the way down. I was over one over one. <laughs> so I just used two strands and just back stitched it. And I, I feel like it, it's just fine. I don't feel like I've lost any of the effect. These are eyelet stitches and those are really fun. And there's like 10 of them total that I did at the very end. So I'm very happy with this. It does say when two fond hearts unite as one, the yoke is easy and the burden light. So I didn't, I had never heard that phrase before. So I thought that was really lovely. All right, my next finish. Yes, next finish ah, is, I gotta move stuff out of the way. It is my sunflower piece and I'm very happy with it. My neighbors are race car drivers and I don't mean that like in a derogatory way. I mean, they are literally race car drivers. <laughs> if you hear that, that's their engines. <laughs> uh, so this is my completed sunflower uh, it, this is what it looked like as a pillow. This was what the full version would have looked like if I decided to do that. I framed it in a frame I got at the thrift store last year. It's an eight by 10 frame. I did this with all the called for colors. I'm so excited about this piece. So I followed, it's got three strands here in the sunflower center. Those are colonial knots in the center here. I did all the back stitching except for they they called for back stitching here and in some of around the leaves and I didn't feel like it was necessary. I don't know if you can see the difference. They literally I, I felt I was okay with not doing that. So I am very happy with the piece. I did wash it and I am so happy to report that I was able to get, there was a big blotch of green highlighter ink up here. It was able, I was able to wash it out. So I'm just so happy that I <laughs> was able to do that. And I, the way I got the highlighter out was I ran the water and it was like a tepid, like a warm, cold water. And I put it, that the dye piece under the faucet and I let the water run on it. And I didn't let the water seep over into the stitching. I kept the piece like at an angle in the under the faucet. Then I used Dawn, blue Dawn dish soap, not laundry detergent, just the Dawn dish soap. And I put a generous amount and I used my fingers and I rubbed and then I let it all wash away in the green. And then I did it again. And again, trying to isolate that spot. So I didn't bring any of the green dye over. Once I got all the ink out, like no green at all. Then I washed the entire piece because I do stitch in hand. And so I did that, I washed it and it was in the blue dawn and I d dunked it in and out, in and out, and then ran it under the water until the water ran clear. Rolled it in a white towel to, to get the excess water out. Never, never uh, twist your fabric, always roll. Then I laid it flat to dry. And then I took a hot dry iron, um, I used the linen cotton setting on my iron, but you, you know, use whatever's best for you. So I did that and then I put it, I did use, this time I used stitchery tape. I did not lace this piece and I'm very happy with the results. Should I show you my backside? I think I will. Okay, let's see. So it's just a standard eight by 10 frame. 
replace it. Well, phooey, I'm telling you the wrong things. It's, sorry. I laced the back of it. I didn't trim any of the excess fabric. What I did do, lacing this, I used a standard eight by 10, the mat board. I've also heard it called like comic book backing board, but it specifically said acid free. I bought that on the website clearbags.com, not affiliated, just where I purchased it. So I stretched it on and then I used wonder clips and I clipped them all down. I did not want to leave the clip on very long though because it will leave an indentation if you leave it too long. So I clipped all four sides once I got this edge completely lined up. And what I mean by that is that the linen thread all the way across that same thread that's running horizontally is all lined up. And I used my measuring and just made sure it was all good. And then I started lacing it. And I used just a 12 weight cotton sulky that I had on hand to lace it up. And I'm very happy. I thought I used stitchery tape on this. I guess it was another project I did. So again, it just fits in the standard frame. I took the glass out of it. Oh, and here, here's an extra board I put in. It's um, like I said, the acid free board to help. And this is another example of sustainable stitching. I used a uh, second hand frame. I didn't purchase a brand new frame. And I also got it um, locally. So I, there was, I didn't incur any additional shipping costs, which, you know, every little bit. I'm not totally finished with this piece, but I wanna show you anyway. I wanna show you my progress. There will be pom-poms, but not yet. I don't have the pom-poms yet. So here is my little punch needle sloth that I worked on. Um, I put it into a pillow. I used a batik fabric. I used Lady Dot Creates chenille trim that I hand whip stitched down. This is not done because I still need to clip the center, the flower here so that it puffs out. This piece, I did glue the whole back of the, the punch needle so the loops are up top, but on the back side, I glued it with the Aileen's Tacky Glue so that when I cut the, these out, the centers of the flowers again, you know, words, ah, I can't remember what they're called, but this part, the center part, it'll poof out and then I shouldn't lose any of the threads because the back side has been glued. So, and then I'm gonna put pom-poms on it too. So stay tuned. I will have this available as a PDF digital download if you like sloths. It will be available soon. It's not available right now, but it will be available soon. So I just wanted to show you that. Yay! Okay, what else do we have? Oh my gosh, so much. I'm just gonna kind of dig in the pile and see where we are and then go from there. Okay, I wanna show my upcoming project that I wanna work on. I pulled some of my threads for them. I don't have all my threads, but I pulled a lot of it. I want to start the Love is in the Air. I got this for my birthday. This is what I bought myself. And I should have bought the threads along with it, but I didn't know what the threads were. Uh, usually on 123 Stitch, they'll list what the called for threads are. They didn't have it, I didn't look, I just bought the pattern. I know, I know, I should have looked. Anywho, I am really excited to stitch this piece. I have stitched the, the Cottage Garden Samplings Dream from her series and I love it. She is a wonderful designer. Uh, she, is, she is a designer and she's in Southeast Asia and lovely, lovely person. I'm so excited uh, to be stitching her work. I'm so excited that she has her work available in the United States. And if you are following along on Instagram with the hashtag Stitch Asia, this is a lovely uh, designer brand to follow. Here's her name. All right. Next all, oh, I have, I still have two more finishes, but I want to, 
<laughs> I have to find the pattern things to show you. I got two lovely cards. Thank you so much. Uh, happy belated birthday cards. I got one from Sally. Thank you, Sally, so much. Don't those cakes look delicious? Thank you, Sally, for the warm wishes. And Valerie, thank you so much. Valerie sent me a absolutely wonderful note and a birthday present, which thank you so much. That was so kind of you. So thank you, Valerie. And yeah, I, I really appreciate it. I told, I told you all in my last video that I had a miserable birthday and it's the first time I can say that because usually birthdays are really awesome. Uh, but I am working hard at having 364 happy unbirthdays this year. That is my plan. We'll see what happens. What have I been working on next? I, I, I swear I have finishes. Okay. I have been working on, there we go. My Stitch Asia piece. This is brought to the world uh, thanks to Abby of Abby Bella Stitch. I will have her YouTube channel linked below. I had been wanting to stitch this piece for a while. It's by Jira. I got the electronic copy of this. Uh, um, race cars. Uh, <laughs> creative Poppy. And I got all the called for DMC. I ordered the DMC for my birthday. I am using a piece of Azure Blue by Z Zweigart. It's a 32 count piece. Again, all the called for threads. So I had half I put on bobbins and the other half, you know, pulled from a stash. And this are the, these are the colors. And this is what I've gotten so far done. It is on a Lugana, not a linen. I said, I think I said linen. It's on a Lugana. And what I love about the Lugana is that it doesn't wrinkle as easily. It's got, I'm not sure the exact fiber content, but it's, um, like has a mixture of synthetic and natural. So I'm not sure the ratio, but it do, they, needless to say, it's soft and it doesn't wrinkle as quickly. So these are my little baby boars. This is a Japanese designer. And again, here's her name. And I'm so happy. I finished, this is her, this is another one of my finished. I stitched her freebie and it's the cow. UFO, which is so funny. She came out with us in December and I was stitching on my cow for the Moo the Merrier and she came out with a freebie cow, which is on her Instagram and she's at, and her, this is her name, it's, uh, K Y O K O M A R U O K A. That's, I, I don't know if there's an underscore in there or not, but she's, um, for that freebie cow pattern. I stitched mine on a piece of gunmetal gray linen. I believe that is from Weeks Dye Works. I had a little bit of fragment piece left. I stitched two of my patterns a couple years ago, Frightfully Sweet Honey and Frightfully Sweet Bouquet, both on this gunmetal. So this was the piece I had left over and I stitched a little cow. I don't know if I'm gonna make this into an ornament. I made and I wanted to show you. I started, I have my little cow ornaments here. I have holy cow. I have my Wisconsin. But no, if you all know what my family from my in-laws and stuff are all in Wisconsin. Um, cow, cow. And then my cow on a trivet here. This was uh, from the Prairie Schooler, one of the Christmas patterns, and I did it on a trivet. So here is one of my little, my little cow themed things. So I was thinking about making it into an ornament and hanging it with my cows. I'm not sure, not sure quite yet. I also thought it'd be fun to wear it as a little pendant. I don't know. I just pulled my own colors. I. Yeah, so that's one of the finishes. Okay, oh, oh, here we go. So my baby boars, I'm doing all of it on the, the called for colors. I could not find the exact fabric that she recommended. And so that's why I used what I used. 
This is finished as a sewing box, and then this is like finished as a little pincushion. The the bird, the sparrow with the forget me not pincushion. So, well, I finished hers, and it's on. This is on the blue fabric that Misty Purcell of Luminous Fiber Arts. She died. I used it for my pattern that was in the ornament issue, 2020 ornament issue in Just Cross Stitch magazine, my Whaley Love Winter chart. This is, it's the same fabric. I had a, a scrap left over. And so I used all the called for colors, but on, on that blue fabric. And I love it. Misty ha has a beautiful collection of fabrics. Um, and I'm happy to have that 32 count linen with uh, two, two strands over two. Those are all my finishes. <laughs> I have just a little bit more of my baby borers to finish. So it's just, I just have this one section right here and there's a flower and one more baby bore. So I got two of the, I got two of the three there. So I'm excited to have this done. I'm not sure how I'm going to finish it. It says to finish it as a sewing box, but I don't know. I'm just, it's just so cute. And again, that's, I, I'm doing that. I, I wanted to stitch this pattern for the last couple of years but I was really inspired by the Stitch Asia hashtag and decided to just dive right in. So I've got those finishes uh, and then I'm excited to show you. I had a start and I've been work. I mean, I've been like working on it and I'm, I'm really excited about it. Here it is. It is on piece of X Jude Designs fabric and I'm using just threads that I'm kind of grabbing as I go. I'm using some of the X Jude colors from her Halloween thread collection that was offered on Kitten Stitcher's site and I got the 36 count. It's called Little Bunny and these are my threads. I've got some of the gentle arts I've got weeks. It's a gold that I won in that ornament prize package a couple years ago. The X Jude orange and green that I pulled. I got the carriage black. Funny story about carriage black. This one I I was able to buy like three skeins of it last year at my local quilting shop. They had the thread. They had the floss. And it was like in a drawer, but in the back of the store, like in the bottom bowels of the, <laughs> and I was able to find some carriage black. So you just never know where it will turn up. And they haven't got an order since. They had just what they had. And then that, once it was gone, it was gone. So those are my colors. I am stitching this one thread over two linen strands on 32 count Extrude fabric. It's in the book, Tending My Garden. This is a Kansas St City Star quilts book. However, there is some rug hooking. Uh, there's a punch needle. There's the quilts. And then there are two cross stitch patterns. And this was one of them. And I just thought it was absolutely gorgeous. I, I am using, I think carriage black is called for on the birds. So I do know I'm using that color and dried thyme and antique rose, but everything else I think is just color. You know, I'm just kind of pulling from. So whew, I built the perimeter of my house and it came up square. So I'm very excited. So right here is where some of the leaves and stuff go. But I came up, I got two of the butterflies in. I've started on the lawn, which is like three different green colors. And that's what was really interesting. It gives it a lot of depth. So even if you're not using a variegated thread, and variegated means the difference in the strands of color. So like DMC, just a flat color all the way through, you could really see some depth and variegation because three different greens and one lawn, you know, it's pretty cool. So here we go. And I'm gonna work, I think I'm gonna work on the roof and fill in here and then pull down and go around. So I'm really excited about that. And the top here above the roof, she has it charted 19 
07, the year 1907. I don't know if I will be putting a year or initials or just leave it blank or put another bird on it. I'm not sure yet. So we shall see what I decide to do with that. Okay, I also have another piece. It is Prairie Schooler. I am working on T is for time, but I really love U is umbrella and S is for sewing. So after I do T is for time, I think I might start another one. Let me see here. I have it in my Boo Bees Apiary bag, my fabric that I had printed on Spoonflower. And then Erica House made my Put it together as a project bag and yes this is very wrinkled very wrinkled okay so here we go i have just kind of been pulling colors as i go i'm working on the hourglass right here i got the whole clock done and this perimeter i need to put my sun in and then there's like some flower things so here is where the hourglass is on this side is sun and then there's tea for time. I am going to be putting tea is for time lord. And this is gonna go on my Doctor Who female scientists. Let's go to space and be awesome wall. Or something like that to that effect. You get the idea of my wall theme. So <laughs> this I'm stitching it uh, one strand of sulky over two linen threads. And I will say though that this the dark here is three DMC 3371 and I'm using two strands. So it's just kind of I've got a hodgepodge of colors and there's the Halloween prairie schooler that I made some mistakes on. And so it's been languishing in my project bag. All right. Last but not least for my works in progress is Barbara Anna's Designs Lemon Kitty Cat. And I am using all the called for DMC. I purchased this on Creative Poppy as a digital download at the same time I got my other baby boar pattern. And I started this on a piece of 32 count nougat from Kitten Stitcher's site. I'm not sure of the maker of it, nougat, uh, but these are the colors. Really beautiful autumnal colors. I am hoping to have this done by autumn and have it displayed with my other, my sunflowers and my lemons. I've got a Save the Stitches lemon piece. This, the kitty cat like a yellow wall with all the cutesy wootsy stuff. So here we go. I did make some changes and I'm happy with them. So I, <laughs> I stitch at night and I was missing, I think one of the colors. Yeah, I was, I was missing a color. And so I grabbed what I thought was a brown out of my thread collection and it just says limited edition. It's not brown, it's green. So I have a green and black cat. <laughs> so instead of DMC 310, I use Gentle Arts Onyx for the, the, the most of the face there is the Onyx color. And then down the center here is supposed to be a, just a, a lighter, like a charcoal gray brown. Oh no, she's green. I didn't see it until I got like in the light. That's what, don't pick threads in poor lighting late at night. I know better, but anyway, it's okay. I decided to add, my other change is I did add in her eyes. I used the colors here from the leaves and gave her some eyeshadow. She's not charted to have eyeshadow, but I went ahead and added that. I liked the eye accent, so she's got some eyeshadow. And then her eye, I didn't put black in there. I ended up putting one of the green, the olive greens in her eye. And I'm happy with how this is turning out. I think it's gonna be so cute. And I am gonna be using these green colors to finish the Halloween kitty cat that was charted, the trick-or-treat cat. 
that's in the fall 2020 issue of Punch Noodle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. I don't know if the print form of that magazine is still available in any of the local needlework shops, but I do know that it's available via PDF digital download if you purchase the digital subscription. But you can always reach out to them. I'm not affiliated with the publishing company, so if you can always reach out and see if you're interested in that other pattern. Whew. What else do I have? So much to talk about and so little time. Look, I have a, this is another thing I wanted to say. Always write, even if it's just a, like a, just always put on your thing what your project is so you know where your threads go. Tending the garden, I didn't put this away with my project, but because I put the label on, I know where it goes. Again, it's not a fancy label, but don't wanna, don't wanna miss, place those threads. All right, I, want to show you, I have an upcoming pattern coming out. It is an adaptation of this. This is a piece that I got. It is Hmong embroidery and they, Hmong are, here, I'll show you. I'm showing you the library book here. Hmong, H-M-O-N-G, peoples of Lao, Thailand, and Vietnam, and some areas of China. They are um, peoples from Southeast Asia. Uh, many of them have refugee and have, have settled here in the United States. There's a large population of Hmong Americans in uh, Minnesota and also where I went to school in California in Butte County and I learned about the Hmong while in college and they make absolutely beautiful embroidery. So I started searching out for the Stitch Asia. I started looking to see if there were any Hmong cross stitch pieces that I could find. Again, I'm searching in English as an American who doesn't speak a second language. I know, shame on me. So I started looking for cross stitch pieces pieces for Stitch Asia and I couldn't find any. So I did invest some of my money and purchased this piece. It's um, it's a segment of an apron. So they would have the apron in the front and in the back. So this is the piece and I have created the adaptation using the beautiful bright colors, the closest DMC approximation I can use. And I will have that pattern available um, here, I'll show you just a little. Um, there you go. And I'm going to have it available in digital download. I think it would be gorgeous made into a biscornu, which I understand is not the same as this apron. I want to honor the, the Hmong. I want to honor them. I'm not trying to appropriate any cultures. I just would love to share their needlework. I will be donating a, pro uh, a portion of the digital download sales to the Hmong Community Center of Butte County. And yeah, so I <laughs> look for that. And with that, I, I did want to share two library books. I This is called A Map into the World. And this is a really lovely book read to my children. And this is an older book from the early 90s, Folk Stories of the Hmong and Learning About Them. So again, lots of resources. I'm learning a lot and hope to share some of that needlework knowledge with all of you. And oh, I have two more things. I got for my birthday, I did order from Kitten Stitcher and I ordered a second set because it was on sale of the threads, the Halloween pack of the threads by X Jude Design. And then I decided to order the little tiny pack of silks to try. So I love Halloween stitching. And so now I have some just for me Halloween silks. And they're quite lovely. They're a lot more muted than I anticipated. So I'm going to definitely have to look in the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher 
and find a prim piece to cross stitch for myself. And yeah, I'm really excited. So hey, those are the two things that I got from a birthday. I ordered thread. And then I did, I left the house. Two masks and my visor. Yes. And I went to the thrift store and I found these two pieces. So I picked it up and I do, I am going to take this out of the frame and wash it and figure out what I'm doing with it. I thought it was so cute though. It's a little kitty cat and it's stitched on 14 count Ada. It looks like it's white Ada, but there is staining. That's why I want to wash it. And it's stitched with two threads over two or two threads over one, one Ada square. She did drop some stitches. So it's not perfect, but I had, I couldn't, I couldn't leave it behind. And whoever she did, she wrote love you. So it was a gift at some point. Then I got this piece. It is like a little baby. I, I always say to my children, sweet dreams and angels. So I was thinking about how I could incorporate that with this. So I picked this up as well. Save the stitches. Another component of sustainable stitching. I will remind everyone that when you donate to places like Goodwill, Salvation Army, your local op shop, thrift store, secondhand store, just remember they don't keep things forever. A lot of times they have corporate policies to have turnover that they can only keep merchandise for so long, put it on sale, it doesn't sell, then they throw it away. And when I mean by throw it away, they literally have large industrial dumpsters where stuff gets thrown away. I am not affiliated with any thrift stores, nor do I speak for any of them. But I will say that there are for-profit thrift stores here in the United States. What does that mean? That means that the CEO gets buku dollars. It's not a charitable organization. It's for-profit. If a piece like this winds up in, like a cross-stitch piece winds up in one of their stores, it could be on the floor maybe up to six weeks. If it doesn't sell, it goes in an industrial dumpster. Or what they'll do, if it doesn't go straight to the dumpster, it'll go to like a last chance sell place, like a uh, buy the pound purchasing, like bulk warehouses where anything you can get by and you pay a certain amount of money per pound. If it doesn't sell at the pound place, then it'll go in the dumpster and into the landfill. So I have never been to a buy the pound um, facility. And I hope to at some point just to see if I how many needlework pieces I can save. Uh, just throwing that all out there. These things do not stay in the thrift store forever. If you are concerned about where your pieces might go after you pass away, I did create a notebook on... Um, because I, I I really want everyone to start thinking about their legacy pieces, their heirloom pieces, their collection of needlework, because at the end of the day, you matter and your stitching matters. And I would hate for your legacy and your life's work to be thrown away. With that, I want to say thank you for <laughs> spending some time with me. I hope that you enjoyed seeing all of my stitching and I can't wait to come back soon and talk more about count and cross stitch with all of you. Remember, I love you and you matter. Take care.